Chapter 18, Flora. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock, Report Number 165. Testimony from Randomly Selected Citizen, Ms. Lux Simeon. They fund people that run into the desert to die. It's not working for us anymore. We shouldn't just be calling for a fairer market, but for the whole system to be dismantled. This gridlock is a monument of our psyche. We are never alive. We just want to leave. To die like the Hope Runners. The Parliament, the Emmers, they want to keep their power, their hold over this tiny rock. I say to hell with that. To hell with the elite, to hell with the Hope Runners. Flora was lying on her back at the edge of the city, staring up at the anomaly through two domes, one in front of her face and the other covering the city. Beyond the anomaly, it was a clear day. She wondered what rain felt like. None of it made sense. Why was the atmosphere inside the anomaly mild when half the time storms raged outside it? Were the storms outside the anomaly even real? A shadow drifted over her. Startled, she realized it was Argent, towering above her, blocking out the sun. Hey, Argent said, extending her hand. Daydreaming? Hard not to sometimes. Argent pulled Flora to her feet. The storms are sometimes just as nice to watch. I hope it's not something we have to witness one day, but there's beauty in the tumultuous and undulating chaos. The best sunsets appear when the rays can scatter against the clouds. Flora smiled at the thought. Okay, ready for a run? I think we'll start with a warm-up around the city, and then I'll teach you things to look out for, and then we do a race. How does that sound? Sounds great, Flora answered. They walked towards the dome gate where every five years a hope runner left to find answers. Argent stepped through. Flora hesitated. Something was holding her back. Come, it's okay, look, Argent said as she did a jet jump in the desert lane. Flora stepped through, and in that moment felt frizzen rise through her entire body. She was outside the dome for the first time. Her father immediately felt closer. Let's go, Argent said, starting into a trot around the dome. Flora channeled her energy into her mech. It started up responding to her. She took a breath. She ran. The machine was noisy, clanking, whirring, and sending pulses of energy throughout. But for her, it was the quietest peace she had ever felt. She put some more energy into her mech, accelerating up the waves of the dunes and sliding back down. At the peaks, Argent would jump and execute a small flare. Flora followed, kicking her legs in various styles. Soon, they came upon an edge of the gridlock that snaked into the horizon. Argent deftly jumped over it with Flora leaping like a star across the cars. They finished their tour around the dome. Flora was brimming. Beautiful, isn't it? Argent asked. It is, Flora answered, looking back at the city. She realized just how fragile it all was. All the people with their hopes, dreams, their failures, their successes, their love, their deaths, all inside that dome. The mother in the penthouses that is taking care of her baby. The couple stealing each other away for a quick one at an office party. The son racing towards the hospital upon hearing about his father's heart attack. The canary kid in the corner store, paying for his candy with his guardian money. The man obsessed with getting a good trade from the public car markets. And her mother, Madeira, lying in the back of her taxi, reading a paperback. I've never seen a mech like yours, Argent said, interrupting Flora's mental meander through gridlock. Where did you get it? Friends, Flora answered. Friends are helping me. Can I take a look? Sure. Flora became uneasy as Argent moved closer. She could see her face up close through the two domes between them. Argent moved around the mech, inspecting it, lifting Flora's arms, checking her neck, touching her back. After a short while, Flora closed herself, wondering if she could trust Argent. Oh, I'm sorry, Argent said, realizing what was going on. So sorry, I'm not trying to inspect your mech for ulterior motives. That's totally my fault. Okay, um, let me tell you about some pitfalls here in the dunes. Please, Flora said, releasing the tension. Okay, when you are first to a dune, run it. The sand should still have enough friction to not have to use fuel to accelerate through it. If the sand is flowing, use jet jumps. Watch out for shoves at the top of dunes. 
If you fall into a roll from there, it will be a nasty fall. The further you are from the dome, the more you have to run. But considering a crowded field, it's sometimes better so you avoid falling or tripping. Because the sand is an issue, you can never truly be sure of your traction. Every step is important. Even if you aren't sure, you must at least look like you know what you're doing. Good runners will use the hesitation as an invitation to attack. Skiing down is slower than running, but you are less likely to trip, so consider that an option. Argent thought some more. I think that's a good bunch of tips. I have to keep some of these plans for myself, Argent said, winking at Flora. All right, ready to race? She took a deep breath and came back to the beauty of the world. She nodded. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Flora's mind teleported to the simulator that stood in MacAttack's arcade. The UI in front of her whizzed into action as she activated the muscles in her body. The mech catapulted into action as she raced up to catch Argent. This time around, the flares gave way to decisive maneuvers around the dunes vaulting across, traveling upwards over the dunes, and skiing down. Argent took an early lead, but Flora's muscle memory sprang into action, channeling it from her youth spent in that arcade. She found spots in the dunes that offered lower resistance, running down them to gain momentum. With the shorter dunes, she just flew over the troughs. She gained on Argent neck and neck. Through the focus, the machine pulsed within her, the sun lowering into her vision. The dunes shimmered. No one could hear her, but she whooped. In the last sprint, Argent eked out inches in front of Flora to take the race. Flora enjoyed it too much, so like in the simulator, she stopped just before the end. She took in the horizon, knowing there was no fake sun waiting for her. The possibilities were endless. Flora fell on her back on the sand in ecstasy. Argent fell down next to her. Holy hell, Flora exclaimed. Amazing, isn't it? They both opened up their domes and took a deep breath of the fresh air outside the dome. They cooled down as the sun started setting. Those days in the simulator seemed to pay off really well, Argent said. Flora nodded, lifting her eyebrows in acceptance. They might both soon be hope runners. Training with Argent definitely helped, but Flora still wasn't sure whether she could trust her. She noticed Argent staring towards the horizon. What do you think is out there? Flora asked, still trying to find her resting heartbeat. Argent turned towards her. Can't be certain, but now we at least know there's something out there. Flora knew what she wanted to ask Argent, but she first let the moment linger along with the sunset. Can I ask you something personal? Sure, Argent answered without hesitation. How do you feel about Armin's autopsy report? His cameras and recordings reported as missing? Isn't that strange? Flora asked. It was strange. The city reported that although the visual recordings were missing, the other operational data logs on the mech were mostly scrambled and indecipherable. Either that was true and a strange fate awaited the Hope Runners beyond the anomaly, or the city was lying. I think that's an answer for something for sure. Something we don't yet know the question to. I don't like dwelling on it too much. Can I ask you another personal question? Argent laughed. (laughs) Flora, I'm an open book. I am who I am. You can just ask. Okay. Flora responded, bowing her head before asking a question she has wanted to know the answer to since she was a child. How do you feel about leaving your daughter behind if you win? Argent looked at Flora as if she was guessing at something. You are asking this because your dad left you and your mother behind. Flora nodded. Yes. Look. I can hide behind veils of I'm doing it for her or I'm doing it to give her a hero or I'm doing it so that she doesn't have to work again in her life. Much of that is true, but I'm also selfish. Armin gave us so much. He gave me an opportunity in life again, something I never knew I had. He helped us when I had given up all hope, living on the streets. I can't stop thinking about that. I wanna finish what he started. It's just me my selfish need to follow through. I'm doing this for all those reasons, but also for myself. Flora listened and nodded. Argent continued. Look, I never knew your dad. Well, me neither, really. She chuckled, holding back tears. Argent reciprocated with a chuckle of her own and continued. 
I never knew your dad. I can promise you that despite whatever outwards reasons he had, he also had his internal reasons for becoming a hope runner. There's no one true reason. I know how that feels, Flora said. He apparently left to protect us. I'm part of the reason he left, and yet I don't even know if he told us the truth. Maybe he was selfish. Maybe he lied. I don't know. There might be one reason or many reasons. He might have been selfish or telling the truth. Remember, he is also just a person who lived in this place we both call our heaven and our hell. This city whose hope runs on a gridlock. Her words were calming. Thanks, Argent. Flora wanted to lay her head on Argent's shoulders, but the mechs were in the way. She moved a little closer anyway. Any more questions? Argent asked. Maybe I should stop asking questions. Together, they watched the sunset. If she kept this up, everything might work out after all. She had, however, forgotten all the dominoes that had fallen into place for her to sit there besides Argent. In the city behind Flora, her friends were still tugging away at the threads of the system that kept the entire city idling along. <laughs>